Hey everybody, Cart Test Ross here with EscapeTheMedagine.com and today I am sitting here with Ned. Well, that's what I call him, but and he's known as Ned in the United States. And But he goes by Edward here in Medellin, Colombia, also known as Eduardo. Sí. And uh, he's an American gringo on the run from the law. Um, or at that's least right. that's the story he told me. Can't touch me here, so. <laughs> no extradition here, buddies. That's right. Um, but no, I met Ned. Um, one day, my wife and I and the kids were coming up from uh, the store. And I, I assume you heard us speaking English. And he stopped us and we had a conversation only to find out that he lived directly across the hall from us. And, uh, and so... Um, had the good fortune to get to know him and his girlfriend here. And uh, and I think he has a great and interesting story about moving abroad, um, particularly a lot of you all that are about to retire or planning to retire. Um, I think his story will resonate very well with, with many of you. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> So, and that was, I guess, what's the housekeeper? Yes. And, yes. you know, I, neither one of us speaks Spanish well, so we, <laughs> <laughs> so we just figured it out. Something we're able to afford down here is housekeepers. Exactly. And this woman, although I can't speak to her, uh, is incredibly good. I mean, she's like a tsunami of cleanliness, and it's... You know, it's uh, a lot of times I can't find things uh, after she's been here <laughs> because she just cleans everything and folds everything and puts things away and stuff. But she's very, very good. And, you know, it's like, what do I pay her? I think it's like about $13. Yeah, about $13 a day. So, wow. Something like wow. that. And I have her just, I only need her once a week. So she comes in once a week. Wow. No. That's what Columbia offers you when if you decide to come here i mean your your dollar goes much further and um you know and, and it, i mean it's, well we're gonna get into all of that in just a moment um but can you share your story of, of, about how you ended up here in columbia yeah it's a very sad story but i guess i should tell you um <clears throat> well go back about i don't know six years I'm, my sense of time is now that i'm uh, sort of a retired well, an artist <laughs> was re retired from my former career. Uh, go back about six years, and I had some money. I had, a, you know, my life savings, which was, yeah, you know, not a huge amount of money, but it was uh, close to two hundred thousand dollars. And uh, make a long story short, I lost to that money mm. in a Ponzi scheme. If you know what a Ponzi scheme yeah. is. And uh, I also lost money for other people because at first I was getting paid very well and mm. uh, thought that I was like, you know, I'd hit pay dirt because I was getting all this money every oh, month. I know how that feels. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, for about a year. And then, and then I started telling other people about mm. this. And it was horrible because it turned out to be a scam. And uh, some of the people that came in late particularly mm. lost, they didn't get hardly any, mm. any paid anything. So... They lost a lot of money, and I don't think about that every day. And I'm not on the run from the law, really. But I am. <laughs> it is something I think about every day, and I feel horrible about. And hopefully, you know, as time goes on, I'll learn to live with myself. But it was very, it was difficult. It was a difficult part of my life. And of course, having lost my money, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to live at least well in the United States. Yes, I still yeah. owned a home. Uh -huh. But I didn't have any other money. Mm. And I had to go back to work and I did jobs that were beneath what I had used to what I was used to doing for, yes. for money. I drove a limousine, I did a, well, I did a bunch of different things. And uh, anyway, uh, I started to, to travel and look at places with what little bit of money I had. And because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to live in the United States mm -hmm. and live halfway decent. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even if I lived in the middle of Kansas, which I, I assume is pretty cheap, <laughs> real estate anyway, which I wouldn't want to do probably, uh, uh, I still, you know, it, it's, it's expensive. I mean, the United expensive. States is expensive almost anywhere you yeah. live. Oh, yeah. 
And so I was looking for a place I could afford to live, but also a place I'd want to live. That's okay. the thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I was living in the United States, I'd love to live where I came from, which is Northern California. I mean, it's, okay. it's kind of Mecca. It's a wonderful place to live, mm -hmm. but it's really expensive. expensive. Very costly, yeah. Really expensive. So, uh, so I went to, where did I go? I went to places in Mexico. I went to Nicaragua. I went to Ecuador, uh, Panama, probably leaving out one or two places. And then last year, was it last year? No, it was the year before last. I went on a tour, about a three week tour or four week mm -hmm. tour of Colombia. Okay. And we went to the big cities and we, we went to the coffee, what they call the coffee triangle which is a beautiful area, and saw, you know, a yeah. decent slice of Colombia, and I just fell in love with the country. It's a, it's a beautiful country. It I mean, is. It truly very, is. Very. Have you looked at that video I gave you yet? Not yet. Okay. But I'm going to watch it tonight. Okay, good. I promise. We, we, if we could put that up for people to watch. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 the, it's nature in Colombia. It's not the culture and stuff, but it's, I mean, there's more diversity of a lot of things here than there is anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you have a lot of variety, you've got a lot of places you can go and have adventures. And uh, we live in a big city, uh, you know, it's considered one of the major cities of the world now. And, um, you know, it, it, living in a big city for me has its drawbacks, it's not perfect. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of cars and traffic and mm -hmm. some pollution and things like that. But it is, it's a great city, there's a lot of things to do, it's easy to get around, uh, the climate you cannot beat this climate here. Immaculate. It's been hot for the last couple of days. A little bit. Literally, right? yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Little but, bit. but normally it's in the it's in the high seventies here. Every day of the year. Every day. That's that's the climate. They call it the city of eternal spring mm -hmm. because of that. And I, the first three months I lived here, I lived in a place called Cartagena, okay. which if you come to Colombia, you must visit. One of the most exotic cities in the world. Wow. It's a very interesting place. But it's hotter than Hades there. It's very hot. Really hot. Very hot. And if you work, you know, if you're going to lie around by an air conditioner all day long, mm -hmm. I guess you could handle it. But if you're going to work or, you know, do anything, it's, it's you know, unless you, maybe if you live in Miami, you, you could tolerate it. But, um, <laughs> but um, it's, it's just, a, it's just, it's hot. And I decided, no, I can't live here. And then I came here. And you stayed there for three months? I stayed there for three okay. months, yeah. Okay. And to give you just a very, then you can ask me more questions, okay. I guess, because you're good at f zeroing in on what <laughs> questions you guys would have. But I came here, I had met a woman on Match.com, most of you probably know about Match.com, mm -hmm. and uh, I communicated with her for a while, and then I, then I wasn't sure when I was coming to Columbia, and I irresponsibly kind of stopped communicating with her, so I had to get past that once I met her, that I had kind of shined her on for a while she wasn't too happy about that but at any rate she she seemed very interesting when i met her on on match.com and then i reconnected with her when i was when i was in uh, cartagena and i decided to come to to, uh, to medellin because people had said you'll like the climate there and okay. it is a pretty cool city and i had been here but the tour had not really given me a good feeling of the city at all so it, it did did not do justice to the city mm. So anyway, I got a plane ticket, which is cheap. Flying around in this inside the country is cheap. And um, I f was picked up at the airport by Ana Lucia, who I call Lucy, that is her, that's her gringo <laughs> name, which I've given her. And um, we immediately hit it off. And she's a beautiful, both inside and out, yes. wonderful wo woman, just a wonderful person. And there are a lot of people like that here. There are a lot of mm -hmm. educated, sophisticated been around you know she's traveled a lot in the world and so she knows you know she she's a very sophisticated person and in some ways i think she's more sophisticated and certainly more intelligent than i am so i'm very <laughs> lucky to have met this woman i she picked me up at the airport here and then i uh, started looking at real estate within a couple of days okay and um i had planned like anybody else would to look at what you know 10 15 20 places and uh it just so happened that the guy that i actually when i was in this real estate place which specializes i can 
turn you on to that. There's other ones too. And working with gringos to find places that are suitable for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and gringo is not an insult here for those of you who may think of it that way. It's just here, I think it just means you're a North American. But um, uh, this guy that I met who is Puerto Rican, so he's mm -hmm. basically an American. I mean, he speaks perfect English. And he sh took me to this place first. And as soon as I saw this place, and you'll maybe you'll get a yeah. few shots oh, of yeah. it before we're yeah, finished absolutely. here, I just knew this was it. I mean, it's it's an older apartment, and old means it's like 25 years old, I think, which isn't really that old. Mm -hmm. But here, that's old because the city is actually not very old. Yeah. It's it's a city that's very modern. Most of the buildings are have been built since then. See, absolutely. And. Uh, but this has very high ceilings. It has three floors. It's got, I think, some. I think it's about eighteen hundred square feet. It's a big apartment. It's a big apartment. And you, I guess, in the U.S., you would call, you would refer to it as a, I, I, I guess, probably a condo. A condo penthouse. Yeah, a condo or a penthouse mm -hmm. apartment. A condo is probably what you'd think of it as. And you know, I'm sure you're curious. You know, what, what would I pay for something like this? Well, I paid a. a between one hundred and six and one hundred and seven thousand dollars mm. for something that no way, no way could you find this in no, any no. big city in the United States. They're just, no. just not. You know, I can't think of a city where it would be remotely possible no, to find at all. an apartment this nice in, a, in one of the nicest parts of town, where I can walk to two big supermarkets inside of five minutes. I can walk to you know movies. I can walk to you know restaurants all over the place. I can go out and eat lunch for 14,000 pesos, which is less than $5. Yeah. And that's oh, a three yeah. course meal. When I, say, when I say lunch, I'm talking about a bowl of soup, a big plate of stuff, and a, drink. Uh, a drink. Yeah. So I, I live on a social security check. Uh, and that's why I had to start looking around because I, at the time I wasn't quite retired yet. Okay. I extended, I waited until I was 67 before mm -hmm. I retired. But even waiting until I was 67, I don't get a big social security. I get $1,400 a month. Wow. That's what I have to live on. And, uh, you know, uh, that's why I became an artist, because <laughs> I love the trade. I love uh -huh. the, the uh, is trade, the right word? Yeah. Anyway, I love painting, but uh, I also need to find, find a way to make a little more money. Exactly. Think. But you can live comfortably on what I live on. I mean, I, I, now that I've bought my apartment and paid for the things you need to kind of pay for furniture I bought down here, and I can talk to you about buying stuff and as opposed to moving your stuff down here. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, I can live pretty comfortably on that of money, but I need to save money for travel because I'm a travel yeah. fanatic. Mm. I need to keep, you know, some money. I need to have a little extra money. Exactly. So that's why I have the desire, the ambition to make a little more money. But if I didn't, I, I you know, I would be okay down here. I'd be fine. I'd be happy, uh, not starving to death, not wanting for much of anything. It's a great place to live, and I know a lot of people who have the same uh, perception. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who, who f once they moved, once they found this city, they said, "Well, this is it. I don't know that I'm going to find anything better than this." Yeah. Oh, yeah. And. Uh, like I said, it's not perfect, uh, but you know, the, putting aside the, the few things that I could complain about, it is a great place to live. No question about that. And that's the that's the beauty. Um, you know, fourteen hundred dollars a month, trying to live on that in the United States, like you said, would be practically impossible. Um, well, possible, but the conditions are not going to be well ideal and. You know, in Northern California, I actually did some research to see, could I actually even live on that? Mm -hmm. And if you can rent a room in a house for maybe five or $600. It's not mm -hmm. going to be a nice room. Uh, maybe $700. Mm -hmm. So there's half of the money that I get right there. Wow. Then you got your food and all, everything else. Eh, you know, it could be done, but it would be, it would be a pretty meager existence. And I, you know... I know that some of you in the in the U.S. are facing that because yeah. you didn't save money, <laughs> dummies, uh, or you saved it and got it ripped off. Bigger dummies like me. Uh, anyway, it just uh, it's uh, it, 
this there there are other places where you can live i think quite well for not a lot of money but this this city this area has amenities that you can't get in most places i mean this is a a very modern first world type city yeah the I internet agree. works very well uh, everything works you it know does. and i can name other places like uh, i was in nicaragua i liked Nicar i liked the city that Gran granada another city that's worth visiting it's mm -hmm. a very interesting mm -hmm. place uh, there's qu there's quite a few expats there but it's it's it is third world oh, the man. internet doesn't work very well uh, yeah, you know i don't think you can even get streaming video at this pace that you need to like watch video you know oh, stuff like no. that so there's just a lot of things you have to consider when mm -hmm. you're going to move to mm -hmm. and and i the only way i knew to do that was to just travel around and stay in these places stay usually for at least a month okay. and really get a flavor for it and i've done that to you know a fairly good extent i invest as you may know those of you who are looking into becoming expats there are websites that are devoted to gathering information for you to tell you what would be a place that might be desirable for you to retire and they're helpful but I, for me i had to come and see for myself i had to get into more i had to dig deeper and get into more detail and i the the impact the uh, feedback that i got from other people plus my direct experiences are really what you know taught me about uh, you know these places yeah for example i mean i i had thought about costa rica many okay. of you probably have thought about costa rica it's a democracy it's very you know it's a very hip uh, place and all that and so i had thought about it and uh when i was in uh, uh granada uh nicaragua when i was in nicaragua the uh the city i was in there was just above costa rica okay so before I went, dipped my, get, did go down there for just a brief period, um, I met some people that had moved, just recently moved up or were, or were checking out Granada. Okay. And there were usually couples that lived in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. And I asked them all, you know, why are you doing this? Why have you moved up here? Or why are you looking to move up here? And the answer was pretty much always the same, which was uh, two major things. It's gotten pretty expensive down there. It's okay. like we're living on, you know, whatever we're living on. It, it isn't much, and it got to be so we thought about moving somewhere else. And we heard about this city being a pl cool place, so they were up there, and some had already moved up there. And the other thing, which was kind of a surprise, but, eh, well, actually, I don't think it was a surprise, because you think of how long Costa Rica has been a popular destination yeah. for yeah, America. That's true. It was, it, it, when I was in college, they were talking about how it was, you know, very democratic. It was not a banana republic, uh -huh. like a lot of the places down in Central and yeah. America and whatnot. And, and all of that is true. And it is, from what I imagine, a cool place. I only spent a couple of days after I did go down there. But it has gotten expensive. And the second thing is too many gringos. And I don't know how you all feel. Some of you probably want to be in a place where there's a lot of gringos. Maybe you feel more secure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can tolerate this guy who's my neighbor, and I got another one across <laughs> the hall from me. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I kind of like being in a in a culture that I, where I'm, you know, exactly. I'm, I'm a stranger, and every day is an adventure. And if I was just surrounded by gringos all the time, eh, it's not. You know, it's like I you're agree. living in a, Panama. Did uh, I mention Panama? I went to Panama. Panama. Is that the same way? Panama is kind of like that. It's, there's a lot of gringos there. There's a lot of kind of nice beach resorty kind of areas. But, you know, it's so Americanized. It's mm. so influenced by... Uh, that's where the word gringo came from, by the way, if you didn't know that. Gringo home uh -huh. came from the Panama Canal area <laughs> when they decided to... They didn't like gringos uh, as much as they thought, and they're trying to get them to go home. Uh, but there's a lot of gringos there. Wow. And there's a lot of gringos in Costa Rica. And I went into Costa Rica, just the northern end, end of it, and along the coast, I went to two towns. can't remember the name of the towns, but one of them was literally uh, mostly gringos. Wow. More gringos than really than uh, yeah, Costa maybe. Ricans wow. or you know other wow. people. Wow. So, yes, that's, you know, and you're going to see more and more of that. Yeah, I'm... I'm Starting to, as time yeah. goes on, uh -huh. because 
Well, you know, for obvious reasons. I don't think I have to explain that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, you know, this isn't the place that gets number one destination from mm -hmm. some of these websites I'm talking about. And I, th I don't know really why that is because, like I said, people who've, in, you know, actually mm -hmm. gone to these places and they, they come here, you know, they, they say there's no comparison. This, yeah. is, oh, this, yeah. is, the, this is the place. But yeah. on the other hand, the average, I think, American still thinks, well, you know, it's a drug infested, uh, you know, uh, exactly. place where you could get shot or kidnapped on the street, yeah. that yep. kind of stuff. And, you know, we there is crime in this city. It's four and a half million people, so there's crime here. There's people that are very poor, things like that, but just like any big city. Uh, but, you know, the a, a little secret, I don't know if you know okay. this. Uh, this is something they never told us in the U.S., but in the 90s, the government of Colombia got together with the government of the United States and mm -hmm. said, can you help us get rid of these, uh, mm -hmm. what do you call them, uh, cartels? Yeah. And so there were five military bases that became occupied by U.S. military and mm -hmm. the Colombian military and the CIA. Uh, and there's a couple of movies you can watch that give you a decent impression of what happened. Okay. But anyway, long story short, mostly during the 90s, they ran them all out of here. Wow. There are the cartels, what little is left of what they call here the mafia. They actually use the term mafia to refer to the cartels. And there's a little bit of it still, but it's, it's you know, they don't kidnap people anymore. Uh, you just, you know, it, it, you, 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 if you're here, living here, I, I've seen no evidence of it at all. Whereas my girlfriend, mm -hmm. who was here in the 90s, she's a Colombian woman, uh -huh. had to drive to the next city to go to work. Wow. And there was this road, it's a big, you know, it's a wide road that goes to this, this uh, city where there's a lot of factories and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And she said that quite often she would be driving down that road and she'd see a dead body on the road. Ooh. You know, they dumped, they'd kill somebody and dump them on that road. Wow. Well, wow. you don't, you just wow. don't see that anymore. That, yeah. is, that is, you know, I think most of the bad guys that do that kind of stuff are now in Mexico, unfortunately. <laughs> now, you know, there's places in Mexico where you, you wouldn't see that either, mm -hmm. but uh, they moved out of the country because it's just not the convenient place to be doing what they do so much anymore. Mm -hmm. I think there's places that are easier for them to do what they do. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, you know, for those of you who are nervous about that, it, th that is not a reason to not come here at all. Mm. It's not a reason to not come here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful country. I mean, it, I, I know you mentioned in, in the previous conversation that when you came to Colombia or Medellin, there were a few other cities you were going to go investigate yes. before selling down. But once you got here, it was a done deal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what I mean, the plan all along was you keep looking until you see something that you, mm -hmm. you know, I knew that if I saw something I really liked, mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was going to know it. Yeah. Now I thought my picture was, it was going to be seaside. It was going to be out mm -hmm. on the coast because mm -hmm. I love the ocean. Yeah. Uh, there was going to be a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I had certain things that, are, that were kind of priorities for me. Uh -huh. And truthfully, I had to give those priorities up when I, when I came here because, I mean, you, you can go to the ocean easily from here. Yeah. There's in, in many directions you can go to the ocean, but there isn't an ocean within, you know, a, you know within a car drive, a, you know, a short car drive or anything mm -hmm. like that. you got to fly or, or, or drive for several hours. Mm -hmm. But... You know, I mean, if I give that up, then I've got so many, I mean, great restaurants, beautiful, I mean, it's a beautiful city, lots of beautiful greenery. Oh, yeah. You're in the jungle here. This yeah. is tropical. It's tropical. Mm -hmm. And you drive up into the hill, hills, this is a valley with mountains all mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. And you drive up into the hills and you're driving through jungle and you get oh, up into yeah. the hills and it's beautiful. it's beautiful up there. It's just beautiful. gorgeous. Beautiful. That's where I want to move in maybe three or four or five years and sell mountains. this place. Yeah and live outside the city. Wow. Which wow. is what a lot of the wealthier people who live here do. They own mm -hmm. a place up in the hills, which is less than an hour away, and they still, many of them, still have a, a place here. Wow, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Colombia is, is, is an amazing place, and you know, just like you, 
uh, when we got here, had no plans on staying. The plan was to stick around three months, um, enjoy the area, and then leave on and go to the next country. But I mean, we're finding it very difficult to leave. And I just announced a few weeks ago that we we're going to go to Bangkok. But now we're rethinking that all together. I mean, it, it's a city that's hard to leave. I, I just, you know, yeah. I hear people say there's other places that are great, but I just can't wrap my mind around a place in terms of living and ha affording the quality of life that yeah. Colombia, particularly Medellin, gives you. Yeah, and and one of the considerations, I think, you mentioned Bangkok. Well, my favorite food is Thai food. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, Thailand would have, you know, was was on my list. It wasn't high on my list, but it was mm -hmm. on my list. But I think one of the things you, you, you consider when you're looking at moving somewhere else mm -hmm is how far away you are from home. Because yes. home is, all, if you're American, yes. home is always yes. going to be where you come from. Exactly. And if you don't think that it's traumatic to basically leave your country behind and move to another country, mm -hmm. to some extent it is. I mean, I yeah. miss things about the U.S. Mm -hmm. Probably always will. Yeah. But not that much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many great things to keep me excited uh, and, and looking forward instead of looking backward down here. Yeah. The, but it's true. I mean, I can fly from here for about, what, 400 and something dollars to California. Oh, so, ooh, that's a And you said you can fly to Miami for what, 75 bucks? 150 Yeah, that's trip. the closest yeah. destination is Miami. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I mean, it's it's pretty close. To, it's about yeah. five hours flight to the United States, which isn't too bad. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you know, if you're going to be in Thailand, well, that's a whole oh. different... I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's gorgeous. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of places in Asia that are wonderful, and I want to go back to Asia. I was going to mention to you Bali. Okay. If you haven't been to Bali, one of the most beautiful places on earth. Mm. But, you know, I, I do think it's a consideration, especially if you leave family or friends behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or love the place that you do live in a lot of ways. It's, it's, it's a big consideration to think, all right, well, I'd like to go back once a year or Mm -hmm. Once every other year, so you want to be somewhere where it isn't that difficult to do that. To do right? that, because it's like twenty hours of flying time, right? From yeah. Thailand, Thailand? Yes. yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Wow! 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 I mean, if you're concerned about the safety here, concerned about being kidnapped, or you know, and again, if your income is not enough that's going to allow you to maintain uh, the lifestyle that you're used to or want to have. I mean, certainly consider Colombia. I mean, Ned, Ned or Eduardo, I'm going to try to work on my Spanish a little more. <laughs> you know, he's living proof. I mean, he's here. He's on the ground. Um, he's retired and, uh, and he's living a very good quality life here in Colombia. Um, we went out to a Korean restaurant yesterday and just just had a good time. So a lot of the stuff that's back home, you, you can still enjoy a lot of those little guilty pleasures here. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, like, like you mentioned earlier, there's some things we, you know, I do miss as well. But for what we get in return and the fact that I can be home in about three, three to four hours um, once or twice a year, I mean, it, the trade off is, is, is worth it. You know, um, you know, so I have a I have a lot of questions for Ned. I know you guys have a lot of questions um, for Ned. So what I want you to do is leave your comments, leave your questions. He's right next door to me. So we're going to get a lot more information out of out of Ned over the next coming week or so. Um, you know, but before, you know, you mentioned that you were an artist and, you know, when I walked into his place, I saw a lot of African art, um, artifacts, and I saw a lot of your paintings and his work is just amazing. Um, can, can we show a, a few, few things? Please, before yeah. we I mean, close you know, this give, out? give people a shot of the apartment so they can get a feel, uh, you know, if you want. Yeah. What it looks like in here and a few paintings on the wall. So I'm going to start over here. This is one of his paintings that he did here. And, you know, he's been collecting for over 30 years, I, I believe you said. 30 
That's right, yeah. And I'm holding this on a tripod so y'all bear with me. In fact, I'm going to take it off the tripod. I have a little more control. Okay. Uh, you will notice that there's too much clutter in here. I'm still trying to figure out where to put stuff and what to put away and you know what to keep. And so there's a lot of work yet to be done. My, my stuff arrived here just I think it was a month ago. And you're going to be putting up a website soon, is that correct? It's already up. It's it's not uh, finished, but you can go look at some of my stuff right okay. now, actually. And I'll um, put a link on the video. More of it will be up soon. Okay. And I'll get a link put up so you all oh, can... Oh, nice, yeah, because I would love it for people to come and look, take a look and tell you what they think. That, that would be very nice. Now, Get so a shot of this one here. Let me see. Yeah. <laughs> and these guys. And there's a lot more. Were you able to get that wall over there with that painting and those two heads? Yeah, let me jump over there. And Ned is available for consultation. So, those of you, I mean, he's settled down and. You know, he's bought property here. He's uh, retired and, and gone through the process to get... Been through the immigration process. Been through the immigration process to get all his paperwork and visas and all of that good stuff done. So, you know, so there's a, he, he's a wealth of information. And, uh, you know, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a link below this video and put a form. And if you'd like to get on the phone and, and talk to Ned, um, you'll fill out that form and he'll reach back out to you to coordinate a time when you all can get on the phone and uh, and we'll talk about the different options in which he'll reach out to you. You know, so uh, any any parting words you, you have? For well, just to finish your thought, if you, if you have Skype, then we can talk for free, just make an appointment and okay. we'll talk on Skype. If you don't have Skype, I can call you on Skype, uh, your phone, and it's pretty cheap so it doesn't cost me too much to call you okay therefore I can do it either way perfect 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 so yeah so go ahead yeah I mean there's you know there's a lot of things to discuss you know whether to move what to move down here or what not to you know the process of shipping stuff down here um, I don't know there's there, there are you know yeah I'm sure you have your own questions and I probably have some of my own observations which might be of some use to you, uh, if you if you want to seriously consider moving to any other place, but specifically to this place, where I have the direct experience, and I you know love to help if I can. Absolutely, and keep in mind he's been to a lot of places: Panama, Ecuador. So if some of these places are places you were thinking about, you know he has you know he he'll have some firsthand insight on 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 that as well. Um, so thanks again for watching. Um, this is Cartes and Eduardo, uh, live from Medellin, Colombia. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Ciao.